Hey everybody, it's John DiPietro, and you know what? When uh, tragedy strikes when it comes to electronics, you have to improvise, and today is going to be a day of improvisation, right, Greg Gerber? You know all about when things don't work out right when, it's, when you deal with electronics. But we are in Salt Lake City. We're here for the first ever RVX, and rather than have our regular show on Wednesday night, Facebook decided to uh, go on vacation. So we have scrambled all day long and figured out um, what we're going to do is go via YouTube. And we were going to do YouTube live, but now we're just going to YouTube tape it because no matter what, we couldn't tell our friends on Facebook Live to go to YouTube to watch it. So with that being said, on behalf of my partner, Bob Zagami, and this is in reverse, so you can't see it anyway. My name is John DiPietro. We are going to tell you all about this brand new RV trade show convention for the trade only. And um, there's so much to talk about. And rather than me talk, which you see that I can't do, I have scoured the earth to find the best available talent anywhere. We're going to turn this camera, and our first guest is our friend from many, many years, one of the most respected writers in the RV industry, Mr. Greg Gerber, the editor and now owner, again, of RV Daily Report. Hey, Greg, welcome to the show. You've been on many times. It's a li it'll be a lot more fun with me than with Zagami. That's, but tell us what your impressions so far of the show, because you've seen 10 or 15 of these oh, yeah. prior to it. I haven't seen anything like this before. This is an entirely different show, that, uh, taking on a different flavor. It's certainly one of, uh, oriented toward the future because the, the products that are being displayed and the companies that are here that are brand new to the industry, they're all about connectivity and getting people connected and getting the equipment and components connected so they all communicate together to deliver better lifestyle experience. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And you've seen other shows when there've been so, you know, a thousand more units than right now, but in retrospect, wasn't that overkill in Louisville? It was, it was hard to go through them. All. Oh, man. You could only go through about 12 and then you forgot what you looked at. Yeah, cuz all everything looked the same and the interesting part Greg is, a, is an RV veteran. We're going to get over to our our other guests here in just a second, but I want to go back to Greg but just introduce him. David Glenn, tell us where you're from and what you do. Hi, I'm from uh, Wyoming, and I work for the Outdoor Recreation Office. I'm the Deputy Administrator and also Wyoming State Parks. We should have figured with the cowboy hat that must have something to do with Texas, Wyoming, or Oklahoma, You're right? Dang right. Okay. And on the other side of the extinguished panel is our friend Chad Booth at your leisure TV. Chad, tell us what that does as we scramble for. As we scramble, I'll just kind of tilt. Yeah, tilt. The frame's giving you a little bit there, of there. Oh, you go. You're perfect. Well. Okay. Um, at Your Leisure is a weekly outdoor recreation TV show started as a boating program in Utah, expanded to off-highway vehicles and then expanded. You don't have to tilt anymore. We're, we're okay. So uh, uh, we expanded into all forms of outdoor recreation. We've been on the air broadcasting for 17 years. Uh, as Leisure, we were 10 years as a boating program before that. So You started right out of high school. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very nice of you to say that. No, unfortunately, I was, I was actually past 40 before I began any of it. And um, uh, we, uh, we are RV-oriented now with a lot of the stuff that we do, but we incorporate it into a lot of other products. So we cover the West. Um, you, people see us in Colorado, uh, Wyoming, Montana, on uh, the Altitude Sports Network, as well as on the ABC station here in Salt Lake. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot because um, we're doing this totally unscripted, right? We don't have a producer telling us when to take a break or whatever, but I have no voice left. And Chad, you make a living doing this, so why don't you talk to Mr. Gerber and uh, Mr. Glenn and uh, find out what you want to find out? Um, because the good part about this show, it's for people that are new to RVing, so well, go actually, ahead. I, I'm, I'm glad to sit in because I do have some questions. So um, how is RVX different? Because I've never attended one of these before. This was our first uh, foray into it, and we thought, well, because it's in our own backyard, we've come down. In the past, the the shows were only about selling products delivered by manufacturers and the suppliers, but they've included educational seminars and uh, a lot of keynote speakers and things like that to deliver information that dealers, manufacturers, suppliers need to so, know what they're doing in the future. So basically the dealers would go to the Louisville show, 
they buy all their product and then maybe meet in their, uh, their Spain or 20 group. And that Something like that. Exactly. But now they've got just all kinds of They've got the education. They've got the keynote speakers launching in the morning, and then they've got these taller patios in the afternoon providing even more information. And then you look around, and there are people squirreled away everywhere getting more information, talking to some of these uh, guest speakers that are out here. So I, I guess my, my next question for you is that you're here in, in the capacity of Wyoming. Are you a vendor? Are you actually displaying and talking about destinations? Or? Uh, we, we do talk about destinations, so uh, we, we have a good relationship with the RV Industry Association. You should. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> sit on the outdoor recreation. We participate uh, in discussions with the Outdoor Recreation Roundtable, which is a lot of groups such as RVIA getting together. And uh, we are invited to the show, and it's been wonderful to sit down and talk with manufacturers. You know, we're, we're looking at everything from potentially moving some businesses to Wyoming and increasing the outdoor recreation businesses to talking about outdoor recreation. The, the KOA uh, campground of the future has been amazing to me as a, a manager of state parks to be able to go back to our staff and say, this is what it's going to look like. This is what we need to prepare for. and This is how we need to do it. And now, one thing that's very interesting is uh, this is the first time I've heard people from outdoor recreation uh, be affiliated with this group because, in fact, RVing and camping is outdoor recreation, but they've never referred to themselves as, and in fact, you are competing with the Holiday Inns and the Marriott's and that type of thing for the, for the vacation dollar. A absolutely, and, and actually outdoor recreation encompasses a lot of things. Right, right. I'm not a just, biker. I'm yeah. a horse packer, I own an RV, I've got some quad runners. Uh, People that have RVs are going out and hiking and mountain biking and using their quad runners. People that hunt are using these things. So it's it's all encompassing. And, and I think sometimes we get caught up in our little niches, but in reality, RVs kind of bring everybody together in, in that type they, of They time. actually do, particularly in the outdoor recreation area, but there's also another element here, and that is that state parks and recreation destinations in the West are kind of behind the eight ball. And, and I learned this when I was doing boating programs because I'd go to most of the state parks in Utah and even hit some of the ones in Wyoming for our boating program. And I'd look at how state parks would accommodate people visiting for recreation. And, and it was like... Second class. Spartan as we can. Yep. And, and after I did a show, a series for 